All right, we're good to go. Up next we have Tony, Tony Vasquez over here on my left, and Carol Pantlon on my right, and they're going to talk about the ever-interesting topic. This is going to be also really interesting and good heads. Before we start, I just, we're going to use real dogs, and we don't want anybody to feel like we're picking on them. Um, we're not bringing up an idea. I mean, the best head that we could ever have uh, on a Springer, but we're going to bring up dogs that have close to that. Um, but we might say something that's a little negative, so please do not take it as personal. But that's not our intention. I would just like to say that Tony and I are lucky. The other people got to talk about butts. We get to talk about the pretty part, the kids. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to quickly read through what our st current standard says about the head. The head is impressive without being heavy. It is beauty lies in a combination of strength and refinement. It is important that its size and proportion be in balance with the rest of the dog. Viewed in profile, the head appears approximately the same length as the neck <coughs> and blends with the body in substance. The stop, eyebrows, and chiseling of the bony structure around the eye sockets contribute to the Springer's beautiful and characteristic expression, which is alert, kindly, and trusty. The eyes, more than any other feature, are the essence of the Springer's appeal. Correct size, shape, placement, and color influence expression and attractiveness. The eyes are of medium size and oval in shape, set rather well apart and fairly deep in their sockets. The color of the iris harmonizes with the color of the coat, preferably dark hazel in the liver and white dogs, and black or deep brown in the black and white dogs. Eye rims are fully pigmented and match the color in coat in color. Lids are tight with little or no paw showing. Eyes that are small, round, or protruding as well as eyes that are yellow or grassy in color are highly undefined. Ears are long and fairly wide, hanging close to the cheeks with no tendency to stand up or out. The ear leather is thin and approximately long enough to reach the tip of the nose. Correct ear set is on a level with the eye and not too far back on the skull. The skull is medium length and fairly broad, flat on top, and slightly rounded at the sides and back. The osteoclip bone is inconspicuous. As the skull rises from the foreface, it makes a stop divided by a groove or fluting between the eyes. The groove disappears as it reaches the middle of the forehead. The amount of stop is moderate. Now I lost my place. <laughs> Okay. It must not be pronounced, uh, it must not be a pronounced feature, rather a subtle rise where the muscle joins the upper head. It is emphasized by the groove and by the position and shape of the eyebrows, which are well developed. The muscle is, muzzle is approximately the same length as the skull and one half of the width of the skull. Union profile, the top lines of the skull and muzzle lie in approximately parallel planes. The nasal bone is straight with no inclination downward towards the tip of the nose, the latter giving an undesirable down-faced look. Neither is the nasal bone concave resulting in a disc-faced profile nor convex giving the dog Roman nose. The cheeks are flat and the face is well chiseled under the eyes. Jaws are of sufficient length to allow the dog to carry game easily.
usually fairly square, lean, and strong. The upper lips come down full and rather square to cover the line of the lower jaw. However, the lips are never pendulous or exaggerated. The coat is fully pigmented, liver or black in color, depending upon the color of the coat. The nostrils are well open and broad. What? Louder. Uneven bite or one or two, I would say teeth are strong and clean of good size and ideally meet in a close scissor bite. Uneven bite or one or two incisors slightly out of line or minor faults. Undershot, overshot, and wry jaws are serious faults and are to be, to be severely minimized. Anybody have any questions before we start? As you can see, there's quite a lengthy description of a correct head. Why is that, girl? I, I'm sorry. Why? Why is it so lengthy? I think because if you were to look at that dog, you want to know that that is a Springer Spaniel, that it is not a Cocker Spaniel, that it is not a Welsh Spaniel, it is, a, it is an English Springer Spaniel. The, the rookie wants to know, as I'm sure, is I see the difference in their nose as far as the depth of it this way. You know, I see some that are narrower and some that are longer, but they all look nice. Does that really matter? Okay, the question is, as she looks at dogs, she sees a difference in the depth of the muzzle in dogs, some dogs. Some are narrower, some are deeper. She wanted to know if that matters. In my opinion, yes, it matters. <laughs> is there like a measurement that it's supposed to be so you know, or it's just the way it looks? There is no exact measurement. It all has to be in balance. When, when I see dogs that are not having a lot of flu, they look rather snipey to me, and I like to see the flu, and I've had ones, um, and I keep reading, trying to get better looking, square looking muscles um, than I do with the snipey looking muscles. Any other questions in the back? How about front? Front of the eyebrows and the spot that comes to the nose? I'm sorry. The eyebrows and the spot when it comes to the nose. What about it? Like the, is there, is there like a way to measure that with your thumb or to look at it? Is there an about it? She wants to know if there's a way to measure the stop where it, where it the goes eyebrows. on. And the eyebrows and the stop where they meet. Is that what you're saying? Is yeah. there a way to measure that? Or just, you know, <coughs> like for a person that's new, yeah. what to look at. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Can I just say something about that? This stop right here. This is a moderate stop. Moderate. No, there is no, it doesn't say it should be one inch, three quarters inch, or anything like that. It's, it refers to it as a moderate. And, and you can feel it when you run your finger through the stock, you'll feel, um, one of the magazines that I have shows it actually going upward, almost straight up. Um, and that's not desirable. It's got to gradually go up, but it can't, the angle of it cannot be a, a slope where it is very, this one shows it exactly, um, the angle, but I have seen some that go straight on up and felt. You can feel that gradually going up to the top of the head, but it doesn't go up for long. And so the dog does not look like it has eyebrows for one. So yes, I mean you can feel it again with, with the same with the box. the angles on the back of the dog. You can feel this. And I've had some that are way too much stop, and you can feel that and see it. They're going to show you. 
display to the camera, please. Get these heads with the camera. You need to see the head, not the side profile. Okay. Hang on. All right. I don't want to be Talk over here. Since you're, you're at the head end. We're going back to your question on the stop. You can feel it as you're going up right here. I'm not going like this and then out. I'm gradually going up on the stop. Pointed at the camera. You see what we mean about open his nose, his nostrils are open, they're not tiny, pinched. The nostrils themselves. The nostrils themselves. Here, I'll point out where the flus are. Some people don't know where that is, please. The depth of the flu. This, this is the flus. The sloppy part. <laughs> I mean, this dog is not sloppy. What I mean is the kind that drool. This is the drools on you when they do. But this is the flutes or their lips. And this, this should be in a. This should come out in a square. It shouldn't run up and it becomes snipe. Any other questions? Enhance it with grouping also. <laughs> but I mean, 
that's the way some people can get it. He was saying you can enhance it with room, but they have to have something there to enhance. Yes. I don't need to go up. Tell them that the chiseling, you can feel, it's the bone. You can feel the bone. It's not just the skin. No, no. This feel is the bone. The, feel the bone it's under bone. the eye. And right I don't know, remember the name feel. of the bone. The chiseling bone. <laughs> no, it's got a name. And right there. There's a bone. That's not, that, if you guys can see that, that's not skin. It's a bone. There. It's a bone. Our standard mentions that the planes should be approximately the same level, top of the head, top of the muscle, the nasal bone. Something else I see a lot out there nowadays is dogs who are down-faced. If, if this is level, the top of the muscle is not level. You'll see handlers, they'll have the top of the head in pictures, they'll have the top of the head level, and you look at the muscle, and the muscle is running downhill. It calls for level planes. Question about um, down case dogs. Is there is this an aesthetic thing that we're trying to breed for, or is there a function to having the level planes? It, it's not aesthetic. But theoretically, the dog will be able to carry the bird. We have a bird better. Uh, I like the planes on on her. Straight, straight, and then starts to go down by the um, neck. It's, it's, there are too many dogs that I see that have the top plane like that, but then the bottom plane, the front is way down low. Um, and so, my preference is to get as level as we can. I don't think we can ever get perfect, but we try to get. Carol's measuring the muzzle to the back of the head. They should be equal. Um, this, this dog is almost square. Right? She might be like a quarter inch longer on the back skull than she is in the muzzle. And she has sufficient... Speaker! Microphone. Behind you, babe. That's our... This dog's muscle measured about four inches long. The back skull may be four and a quarter. This dog has almost equal length of foreface and skull. Back and skull. The, the other thing I like about her is the blue is not excessive. Um, and it gives her that square look. The ears are set equal to the eyes or below the eyes. Um, but I think it gives you that soft appearance of the, that you want on the springer and other hand. Something else I would like to say is when you look at this particular dog, you know that it is a bitch. There's no question in your mind, at least not in my mind, that I am looking at a bitch. Sometimes there are bitches out there that have real heavy heads and you think it might be a dog. Um, one thing I want to put out or point out when you do Mike, grooming please. on a dog that is down face, you can not she is good of course, but you can when you groom it you need more hair here so it looks like those planes are even. So you really have to put your hands on the head to really see what the planes are. Because it with some good grooming, you can kind of fake a moderate. Yeah, I'm going to start.
The other thing I'd like to point out on her is the width of her muzzle should be half of the width of the back skull. Uh, sometimes we find them too large back here, sometimes we find them too narrow, but that's something you should look at. Again, it's good for the proportions have to be correct. I think that catches us all. Carol. Carol. Tony. Tony. You want to see this one? Eye color matching the nose. This one doesn't have the. Our standard calls that that do also that from here to here the length of neck should be approximately the same as the length of the head. Tape measure. <laughs> it helps <laughs> because it's just. Uh, mm -hmm. Carol, measure from the other side so the camera can see, please. You think I'm cheating? <laughs> Our at-home viewers just want to see. I get roughly eight inches from the eye to the end of her nose. Okay. Tony Miker. Miker. So they're equal. Pardon? So they're equal. They're equal. Mike. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is another dog that has chiseling. If anybody wants to come up and feel this dog's facial bones, she has good chiseling. Towards the camera, please. One of the things our standard calls for is very little hog to be shown, the dark around the eyes, the almond shape on the eyes. She, you can look at her and she's got a very soft expression. Um, you'll see a lot of dogs, that, a lot of dogs that will, the eyes will stay down, down and up. But I don't think I will. Um, it it's, makes the Springer look like the Springer. Um, 
years ago when I first started, you used to see a lot more red haws. Totally destroys the look and the face of the dog. When they're tight, like that, you can definitely see their almond shape. Uh, too many round eyes that I see. Um, yes, in the dark pigment. You're starting to see a lot of light pigment in the liver dogs. Uh, more so, you see almost a yellow eye. It's not what we want in our standard. We want pigment to be equal to the dog itself. And this one is another, again, beautiful expression in the eye area. Also, you can feel the bow chisel in the eyes and that. And you can also tell it's a bitch. You can also tell it's a bitch. Oh, yes. Tony, you bring up eye shape. I've noticed in a few years that I've seen um, round eyes tend to correlate with a larger, more prominent stop. Is that coincidence or? I really, I really don't notice it. I notice the round eyes. I don't look at the I'm looking at the stop, but I don't, I have not put any, I correlated it together with that's what's causing it. Um, but I do see a lot of dogs with round eyes that have shorter muzzles. Um, it makes the face look pushed in. She's got a, again, almost equal, if not equal. The standard mentioned a convex nose, a little roach over the end of the nose. Now, if you look at this dog, this dog does have, this is the result of an axis. So he's got some layer of scar tissue. He has scar tissue. But this would give you an idea of what you would see if you saw a dog who actually had a convex nose. Ju Julie, tip it this way a little bit. There you go. This is, a, to me, a dog that is obviously a male. It's a dog. No question. Let's hope so. Ears set on, even with his, uh, the line of his eye. Turn it forward. Turn it forward. Do you see what we were talking about here? Like, yeah. your mouth. I just asked if you could see that, if that weren't from bumping his crate. Okay. Uh, I have a couple more dogs, maybe three more dogs, just we could put up here on the table. Did we ever get a third? Yeah, we did. Oh, I guess we do. Any of the dogs that have not been up here, uh, Jam and who else? Anna. Anna. If people would like to come up and look at them and make comparisons, anybody have questions? Don't be bashful. Carol, I just have a more comment. I also have field red springers and the pitches in field red springers are very snipey noses, very snipey. And I can tell you, they have no trouble picking up a very heavy bird. Now the males don't tend to be as snipey. They tend to have more of a muzzle and more of what we would consider a proper shape to their head. And they're generally bigger in size overall, of course. And of course, they have no problem either with a pheasant. But many times the puppies, the female puppies in particular, with their little snipey muzzles, as they're learning, they won't pick up the body of a bird. They'll pick up the bird by the head or by a wing. So it's interesting just in terms of function. Thank you. Repeat it for the camera. <laughs> Summarize it. <coughs> to summarize, April said that she has found that that in the field side, the 
field bred dogs, that they can still have a snipey muzzle and still pick up a big game bird, correct? By the head. By the head. Puppies pick them up by the head. But are they capable of picking them up by the body? A bit, yes. Okay. Yes, they, they learn to do that, but the snipey bitches when they first start are sort of taking them by the wing or by the head and then they learn to pick that wing up. Another thing our standard calls for is the bite to be scissored or equal. Uh, I was surprised when you read it that it's an equal first. Um, Hi. I can't hear you. Um, but I have found, I mean, this dog has a scissored bite. The only way you're going to see it by coming up here. But what I have found is it has nice medium to larger teeth. When I have small teeth, I see, I, I notice that they end up having even bites or even a little undershot. Um, nothing to hook onto to keep that the teeth in alignment. You'll find some judges that will also look at the side, and that's not required within the sporting breed. But, but, I'm sorry, but. Not in this one, it's not. No. Um, but I've noticed a couple judges have told me they look at that because they can tell if the dog dog has had any dental work. Um, so they want to see where the scissors come together and how the canines are together. So I complain about it when I come out of the ring. You have to look at the side. But now that I know what they're looking for, I understand. But again, nice sound teeth on the bike. I like again the muscle not excessive in the blue, uh, and then the planes are very, very nice. So. Any questions? Anybody want to come and look at the dog? Yeah. Can I just, I just wanted to say something. I would, I'd like to say one thing. This dog has a nice eye that is, uh, that compl uh, is complements the color of the coat, and she has a nice scissor bite. Come up, take a look. Linda? Explain what a rye bite is, some people don't know. A rye bite, to me, is when I can demonstrate it. Do it, just demonstrate, that's <laughs> it. I can show you well. a rye bite. I can show you a rye bite. If their teeth should meet like this in a scissor bite, a right bite will be about like this. I had a very pretty little bitch many years ago in a long ways from here, and the dog's tongue was hanging out. It was a hot